Okay, so binomial theorem. Um, by now, we probably already know how to expand a binomial. A binomial is just like an a plus b, x plus 5, 2y plus 6, whatever it is in brackets, to a power. So in grade 10, you learned how to do the squares. Um, if you had me, probably a certain way, or sometimes guys foil, you just do a times a, a times b, nightmare. It takes too much time. We don't do that at this level. So a plus b squared. Um, produces this, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now, formula is kind of a bit annoying to look at, um, so I'm going to show you a kind of way to expand any binomial to any power using the pattern that is the formula. Instead of knowing the formula, if you know the pattern, sometimes it's easier to understand. Okay, so a plus b to the 3, a3, 3a three, three squared b plus 3, like, how, where does this come from? Where's, what's this 3 doing here? Why is this 2 here? So, that's what I'm going to get into. Um, let's first recognize the patterns that are happening with these two easy numbers, 2 and a 3. We're not even at the 4, 5, 6, um, etc. So if you look at this first one, I start with the highest power. This is the highest power, 2. So A starts with the highest power, and then B ends with the highest power. So the outsides always have that exponent. Look at the 3 and the 3s. If this was a 4, the A would have a 4 on this side, the B would have a 4 on this side. Those are the easy parts. Now, the middle is a difficult part. Look what's happening to the a's. The exponent is falling by 1. a squared, a, a to the 0, technically. Look over here. a3, a2, a, and no a. And look what's happening to the b's. b0, b1, b2. b0, b1, b2, b3. So the a's fall and the b's climb. Always. Done. Now, where do these numbers come from? Well, these numbers actually come from... Um, Pascal's triangle, or you can consider it if you like probabilities and odds. This is how many ways you can arrange a squared b. a a b, a b a, b a a. There's three ways to arrange a squared b. We pop a three in there. There's two ways of arranging a b. We slap a two in there. Okay, now if I went to a to the four, or a plus b to the four, try to follow along with me now. The a's start with the highest power. Watch this. I'm just going to create a skeleton. My A's are done. Let me do the B's. No B, B, B squared, B3, B4. Now I need the coefficients in front of these guys. Okay, and in Pascal's triangle, if you ever build Pascal's triangle, you just add the numbers and draw the number underneath. So 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6. These are the coefficients that go in front of all your terms in the binomial theorem. So we have the exponent 4 here. So our coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. I don't write. Okay, so just understanding this pattern, we can expand any binomial, which is going to be crucial when you're doing difference quotient in Chapter 2 and in calculus. Um, this is something grade 10 can understand, grade 11s, grade 12, you should have this mastered by now, but if you don't, please watch this over and over. Let's put an example up now. Let's say I got 5x plus 4 to the 3, and I want to expand this. There's no way that I want to write this thing down. If you're turning this into this, you're going the wrong way. In math, we go from here to here. We go from a lot of writing to less writing because this gives us more opportunity to find our answer with less error and with the shortest route. So I'm gonna use the same pattern that I used here. I'm gonna cube the first term. 5x cubed is 125x cubed. I'm gonna cube the last term, 64, four cubed. And now in the middle, I'm gonna square this and multiply by this. This is, sorry a squared times b. So you know what, I'm going to write it down. Plus a squared times b. And then I'm going to do a times b squared. I always use brackets because it can get kind of annoying here with the exponent laws. Um, so just so you know, I've actually already evaluated these guys. And these guys I still haven't because I want to show you the exponent laws and the multiplication here. Cubing something is pretty straightforward. 5x cubed is 125x cubed. Now i got to put the exponents in front. You're looking over here, 3. Look at Pythagorean 
or sorry, Pascal's triangle, one, three, three, one. So I know a three has to go in here and a three has to go in here. 125x3. No exponents here, so I can multiply. 3 times 5 is 15. Double it twice, 60. I lied, it's supposed to be squared. 5x to the 3, to the 2, to the 1, to the nothing. So 25 times 4, look what I'm doing here. I'm not timesing it by 3, because 25 times 4 is easier to multiply by 3. If I do 25 times 3, 75 times 4, it's going to take a little longer. So I'm going to do 25x squared times 4 is 100x squared, 300x squared. What about over here? 16 times 15? Mm, I'd rather do 16 times 5 is, what, 80? 80 times 3, 8 times 3 is 240, with adding a 0. Obviously, you can pick up your calculator, but... I like deciding what to multiply first in order to do it faster. You usually pick up your calculators because you don't want to do 15 times 16. Neither do I. Do it a different way. Plus 64 this is your final answer. Might look confusing, especially if you're in grade 10 or 11 looking at this, but my 12s, um, you need to have this down. If you don't, ask. There should be no reason why you're doing this at this level. It's going to take you forever, especially if you're going to calculus and you have something to the exponent 5. You cannot be expanding it this way. You need to know binomial theorem. It's a very straightforward patterns. Are you going to make a mistake? Absolutely, because there's a lot going on here with exponent laws and coefficients and whatever. So practice. If you practice this, you will get quick at it, and 3s, 4s, 5s will not be scary ever again.